Man, the great thing about the holidays this season is you've got a ton of awesome smartphones to choose from. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and in my hands, another two awesome Android phones to choose from this holiday season. One is the HTC One X. It's available on AT&T, and it's packing 64 gigabytes of internal storage, a quad-core processor, and a ton of evolutionary updates from the very similar-looking HTC One X that came out earlier in the year. Then you have the Samsung Galaxy S3. This thing is the Mac Daddy when it comes to Android devices. It's on five carriers in the US, all around the world, and it's packing some awesome specs as well, including a dual core processor, an eight megapixel camera, TouchWiz, and Android 4.1, with the exception of the Verizon version, which is supposed to get it soon. Which one's the best? We'll find out in the dogfight battle. But first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this that we turn around and give to you for free on PhoneDog.com in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your settings, and more. So when you walk out the door, these are set up. You're good to go, and you can focus on playing with your awesome new device. Let's take a look. One X Plus, Galaxy S3. Which one's the Mac Daddy? We'll find out in the dogfight, which starts right now. The Android fun continues. This time around, we're dealing with HTC and Samsung, two great Android heavyweights in the mobile market. This is the HTC One X. It's an evolution to the One X, or excuse me, the One X Plus, I should say, an evolution to the One X, which was announced earlier in the year at Mobile World Congress, released on AT&T, a little bit later, but still early in the year. This is an update. It's packing some nice specifications to kind of bring it up into that you know, competitive place where it can compete with things like the Galaxy S3, things like the Note 2, the iPhone 5, some of these devices that came out a little bit later in the holiday season. Now, thanks to a spec bump, it can compete a little bit better. Specs-wise, it's packing a 1.7 gigahertz quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3 CPU. You've got a 4.7-inch HD display, 720p HD display, an 8-megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD recording capabilities and HTC's ImageSense chip. You've got a 2,100 milliamp hour battery, still packing AT&T's 4G LTE connectivity, and it's running Android 4.1 with HTC Sense version 4 Plus. So specs bumped, software bumped, HTC services bumped up to the top. And you know what? It's still got its faults, but I will say it's got a great design. And the real killer here is 64 gigabytes of internal storage. This thing is packing a ton of storage out of the gate. Juxtapose that to something like the HTC Droid DNA, which just came out and only has 16 gigabytes of internal storage. For those people that like to consume a lot of media, this can be the device for you just because of the internal storage. That said, it still has a, little, a few issues. I don't like the fact that it only has one gigabyte of RAM, whereas this one has two gigabytes of RAM. I notice it every now and again in day-to-day -day performance. I find that this one will occasionally say loading. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in part one and later on in part two of the video. This is the Samsung Galaxy S3 available at all the carriers in the US, all the, the postpaid nationwide carriers. This is the Verizon version. It's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core, Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.8 inch Super AMOLED HD display with Pentile technology, an 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a 2100 milliamp hour battery which is removable on this device. It has a micro SD card slot. It has 16 gigabytes of internal storage out of the box with an option on certain carriers for 32 gigabytes. And then it's got Android 4.1 on most cases with the exception of the Verizon one. This one's still sitting on Android 4.0 but it's supposed to get Android 4.1 very soon. Actually, as I'm shooting this video, I'm seeing the updates saying that Verizon just released the change log for Android 4.1. So that means it's on its way for the Verizon users. If you're wondering why I'm comparing an AT&T to a Verizon, when I had the, the AT&T Galaxy S3, I don't have one at the moment. I just have a Verizon PR unit so we're gonna roll with that one and compare the similarities. And you know what, in some cases, the differences as well. So let's talk a little bit about build quality with my voice crack and all build quality because you can see some differences here. Samsung's devices historically have been kind of plasticky, a little bit of a different feel as opposed to HTC devices with different shells, kind of this unibody construction, beautiful shell that fits in the hand. So from a build quality standpoint, quite a few people prefer HTC. That's not to say that Samsung doesn't have its fans. Quite a few people I know enjoy the Samsung build quality and compare this to something like the iPhone 5 where it's got glass, it's got metal, it's easy to break. This one might be a little bit less easy to break, although I will say I've seen some people damage their screens on the Galaxy S3. That said, plastic build quality, a little bit less susceptible to scratches, things like that. Over here, you've got that beautiful polycarbonate shell, you've got a volume rocker on the right side, micro USB charging port on the left. Still got that nice kind of curved form factor, which makes it easy to hold up on the phone for a long phone call. AT&T logo here, though, I will say it's just the Globe logo now, as opposed to the AT&T text. Beats audio on this device, and then up top, 
you get your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a power button, which given HTC's history with recessed power buttons, I like this one a lot. It's not recessed, at least on this unit at all. Feels really nice. Over here, volume rocker, power button on the right side, micro USB charging port at the bottom, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, and then a little sticker as well as your camera on the back with the speaker. Now this one kind of deviates from the typical Android look and feel, and it was interesting when it came out. It's still kind of interesting. They continued along in the same design theme with the Note 2, but it's got a physical home button. Now this home button with Android 4.1, you can double tap it to access S-Voice, which is Samsung's solution, or you can press and hold it to access the task manager, and on Android 4.1, it'll allow you to access Google Now as well, so you've got that capability there. Over here, capacitive buttons back, home, and then recent applications, and you'll really see some heavy HTC customizations here with the recent apps by pressing and holding. I have this as kind of a dual purpose button. I press it, and it gives me kind of the, the equivalent of a right click. Press and hold, it'll give me the recent applications. And I've got my home button, which I can press and hold, and access Google Now, which I'll show you in a little bit in the video, and that's that. So you've got the different button configurations. A little bit different, you've got capacitive buttons on each side of the home button here, menu and back. And let's take a look at what comes pre-installed on both of these units. You're packing the typical carrier installed blowware as you would expect. Code scanner, family map, locker, navigator ready to go over here. Unfortunately, most of this can't be uninstalled. Device help. ME Infiltrator, which is actually a pretty cool game that showcases the quad-core Tegra 3 processor. We'll have to take a look at that a little bit later in the video. I feel like I'm saying a little bit later to everything in the video. Don't worry, the fun part's coming, I promise. Tegra Zone, which again is kind of a, uh, a Tegra-centric game stop where you can go and purchase games, you can download free applications, and more. And then you've got YP Mobile as well. Over here, quite a few Verizon applications. You've got Vcast apps, you've got guided tours, you've got mobile hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, you've got Setup Wizard, you've got Visual Voicemail, VZ Navigator, and that's about it. Again, can't be uninstalled over on this device. Now take a look quickly at the notifications bar. I find that the implementation overall of the notifications bars, I prefer TouchWiz and the way that Samsung's kind of implemented it over here on their user interface. One of my favorite things here, the ability to quickly access toggles. There are a ton of times, can't even tell you how many times where I'm you know, accessing Bluetooth on the go or I need to quickly mute my device or I want to lock screen rotation where it doesn't rotate or turn on and off mobile data. I can do that just by swiping down and I can take it out of the mute mode or I can turn on Bluetooth or turn off GPS. It's really nice to have these up in the top corner here. And this is something HTC did for a while. If you remember back to previous versions of Sense, they had the two tabs down here at the bottom with quick access settings. They've removed those in lieu of the typical Android 4.0 and up settings button where I can just quickly access right there and come in here and turn Wi-Fi on or off or Bluetooth on or off, etc. That said, I'd still like the ability to kind of toggle down really quickly and just turn on and off little things like mobile data, be able to mute the device. There is an easy option over here on this one. I can press and hold. I shouldn't say press and hold. I can press the volume rocker and I can quickly do that and migrate back and forth between the different options. So you do have an option there, you just kind of have to learn how to do it as opposed to over here. It's nice to have these quick settings and I find that for me, this is the selling point of TouchWiz and Sense4 Plus. They've got some great value added features like that where you can go in here and easily change settings. This is a great value add for a lot of mainstream consumers that are switching from the iPhone or switching into a smartphone for the first time. Little settings like that are really going to make or break the experience for them. Let's talk about the personalization choices since we're kind of rolling into that anyway. Come in here and take a look and you can see HTC is very clearly marked as personalized. You've got a couple of different options here. Skins, and this is one of my favorites. You can come in here and kind of customize and make this device your own by going to, let's say, Graphite, for example, one of my favorite skins on Sense4 Plus. And you'll see it changes the color, the clock, the theme, the overall look and feel. And it really gives it a nice feel to make it your own device. So you've got the Graphite theme, your friend has the HTC theme, your other friend has the Steel theme, etc. You've got a lot of different choices here along with wallpaper, lock screens, home screens, and more. Now, you got that over here. Samsung has blown it out of the water with Galaxy S3. I remember when I first got this device, I was amazed at all the little settings where it's like, why don't they do this on every single device? The big one for me, and HTC does not have this yet, and you're going to see it up here in the top right-hand corner, a physical battery percentage indicator. I know I harp on that on almost every single Android video, but it's little things like that to me that distinguish the user interfaces from stock Android. It's something that everybody likes to have. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it, but the option, the fact that it's there as an option is really, really nice. You can do some really cool things in here. Motion, for example, one of my favorites is direct call, where when I click this, and I can learn more about it. I'm listening to a message, or looking at a text message, and I'll show you what it looks like here. Go ahead and enable motion, and you can see Samsung Mobile right there. I'm gonna move it to my face, and as soon as I hold the phone up to my ear, it gives Samsung Mobile 
a call. It's a great feature like if you're text messaging somebody and you're like, you know what, I'm getting ready to get in the car, let me just call them. Hold it up to my ear and it auto dials. Smart Alert is another one of my favorites. When I turn this on and I have a missed call or a text message, I'm the king of doing this all day long and killing my battery because I'm turning my screen on to see if I have that little message notification up there in the top left hand corner. Well with this, I don't even have to do that and I don't have to look at the notification light either. I can just pick the phone up and if it vibrates, I know I have a missed call or a text message, one of my favorites there. Tap to top, I don't use that one that often, but I do find that to be pretty functional, where if you're in a list, all you have to do is tap the top of the device and it takes you up. There are a ton of different choices here. Palm swipe for screenshots, one of my favorites. Palm touch to mute pause. Flipping it over, which is an HTC thing. Absolutely love all these little customizations and settings that really make these devices functional. So again, another one over here, we'll take a look. Power saving, actually I'll take that back, it's down here in security, security. And we'll go into uh, lock screen options. And this kind of goes into lock screen stuff like we talked about over here on the HTC side. You've got a bunch of different choices. Weather is what I had it on currently. Another one of my favorites on the HTC side is productivity. I can come in here and I can change the settings if I want to where it'll display all these different things, calls, messages, emails, calendar events. And so when I hit done and I hit home and I turn it off and back on, you can see I've got my weather. I don't know why it's still showing weather. It should be showing the productivity lock screen. Let's see. And it's little things like that where I'm like, eh, that's not good. Productivity lock screen applied. There we go. Let's try this down. So I've got Dallas weather. If I had missed calls or text messages, they'd all kind of show up underneath the weather and this would bump up. And I can easily take the weather, the messages, the calls, and swipe those down into the circle as well as the shortcuts down here. Now some great stuff over here as well. Shortcuts are on the lock screen. I've got those four shortcuts at the bottom, which I'll show you in just a second. Information ticker is great if you want quick access to news. Camera quick access is one of my favorites. I'll show you that one. Dual clock, let's turn on the weather because I do find that useful. And then of course you can wake up commands where you can say Galaxy, wake up, or Galaxy, unlock, and it'll unlock the device. So a lot of really cool features like that, but you can see I accessed or turned on the weather, so the weather's showing, but the camera one's one of my favorites. Press and hold, shift down, and you can access your camera just like that. So a lot of really great features where I'm like, these are gonna resonate with consumers because they're quick and easy, and you know what, even for me, somebody that's used Android as long as I have, I'm like, why has this not been an Android forever? So it serves a couple of purposes. It enhances Android, and it makes Google grow stock Android by default, which is really, really a good thing. If you're a fan of Android, even if you're a fan of stock Android, you're an Android purist, you have to appreciate the fact that skins like this are helping stock Android grow and change and be better overall. Now, back to the notification bar really quickly here to talk about one more personalization thing. You'll notice that Wi-Fi off and Power Saver off on both these devices are up in the notifications bar as ongoing tasks. Well, you can't remove those. That's the downside. AT&T, and I actually believe this is an HTC thing, but maybe AT&T had a hand in this. Power Saver off. I can turn it on and off pretty quickly and easily, but I can't remove this. That's a feature that stays in the notifications bar. And same thing with Wi-Fi, I can't remove it. It may seem minor to you. It drives me nuts to have clutter in my notification bar. If I want Wi-Fi, I can go to any other model of the Galaxy S3 and just click the Wi-Fi button. I shouldn't have to have it in my notification bar. And kind of same thing over here as well. Power saver off uh, as well. That said, the battery life is not the greatest on the One X Plus. They've improved it, made it a 2100 milliamp hour battery inside of it. That said, Still not my favorite battery life. We'll talk about that more in part two. Stay tuned for part two. Speed tests, camera settings, all kinds of personalization goodies and more and two of the hottest devices this holiday season. Stay tuned for part two.